Okay, so I wanted to cover a simple subject of how to create a leather material with 3ds Max and V-Ray. I do see that even seasoned artists occasionally have difficulty with making photorealistic leather. And it's not that hard to do if you understand some basic principles and basic fundamentals. So hopefully this will help you just get that render and get that leather looking exactly how you want it to look. So let's jump straight into 3D. And this is the scene. And I downloaded this sofa from 3D Sky, but I created the material myself. Now, if I look at the material window here, this is the leather. And as you can see, I've kept it simple. I like keeping materials simple these days. I see a lot of fall-offs, a lot of curves, a lot of things going on in materials, and often those increase render times. Um, and even though I understand them and I do use them, I'm trying to keep it simple. And the basic yardstick I use, the thing which I measure a render by, is does it look photorealistic? And if you look at this, like, to me, this looks pretty good. This looks like a leather sofa. Now, the best way to know if it really looks like a leather sofa is Google leather sofa. Click your images and find something which you like. Let's see. Uh, maybe this. So we just get Get a few references here. Okay, so we got these references here. And that's what we're creating. We're creating that leather. And to me, this looks pretty good. So, really, how do we do it? Well, the first thing is you need a decent map here in your diffuse. So, actually, the first thing is to open your material editor, which you click here, and then you want to go to your materials, V-Ray, open that up, and double click V-Ray material. Drag that over, double click here, I double click on the, the little ball there, the little picture, so I can see what I'm doing. And let's just make this a bit smaller. And I don't know if this is a group. It's an edit poly. Okay. So the first thing would be to assign this to the leather here. And we can just drag that and drop it straight in there. So now that's assigned. So if I render, I'm just going to set this small here. Let's do 800. Don't need, to, don't need to save that out. For testing, I like to use progressives. That's just me. make sure this is set down low for a test amount and turn off those elements I don't need those on for the test okay that's your plain gray material there so what we're going to do is we're going to assign some textures to this and the first thing which I did is First thing I did is I found this texture. I looked on the internet, I was like, okay, well, what do I want? What sort of leather do I want? Do I want a dark leather like this? What kind of leather am I after? And so what I did is I came in here and I looked and I just Google leather texture. And then look at the images. And then just come through here and you can have a look and see what sort of leather texture are you after. And feel free to come in here to the tools and look at your size. And you can select larger than the size of the image you want. So you want this to be fairly high. And I came along and I looked and I was like, that oh, looks pretty nice, but you know, with that grain, that's fairly small. Even though it's high resolution of 4K, it's a fairly small piece of leather. 
So basically, just come in and you can see this is blurred. And again, that one's blurred, and that's a fairly small piece of leather. Or at least it looks it. Maybe it's big, but I get the idea it's, it's small. This is very blurred. So you get the idea. I was looking through. It's nice, but it's got a big seam. Feel free to click on these, but these ones in this little box are probably not going to be the same size as the other ones. That was actually quite nice. And I ended up looking at this, and this is the one I downloaded. So I downloaded it, and it's here. And the thing is, I didn't want my leather to be this color. Now, fortunately for me, this texture actually is seamless. Someone's come in and made this all seamless for us, which is really nice. But I took that, and I took that into Photoshop. And I again Googled leather, and I found a color which I liked. So I was like, I like this color. Obviously, this is a very small image. And so what it is, is I came in here, and I pressed Control J. And then with this, I came right up here to Image, Adjustments, Match Color. And then here, I selected the number here, this image. And then I said, OK. And that adjusted it to that. And so that's what I did. That, that gave me this color. Now, I looked at it, and I'm like, mm, it's a bit chocolatey. It's not really quite what I want. It's getting there, but it's not quite what I want. So first of all, I wanted to adjust the color to get to the color I wanted. And that's what this curves does. You can add a curves by clicking on here. Just click curves. And then I went from here to red. And I brought that down a little. I wanted it to be less red. It was too red before. And I went green. I brought that down a little. And I may have just adjusted the blue ever so slightly there. I think I pushed that up a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. Okay, so that's what that does. That adjusts it to the, the brown that I like. Okay, so then what I did is I, I had this. This adjusted the color, but a lot of the details lost here and it became chocolatey. So I decided what I would do is I would take the original image and I would put that on multiply. So I put that on there to bring in a lot of extra detail, but in doing so, it made everything much darker, which is not really what I was after. So what I did is I came in here and I brightened it. And then I adjusted the hue and saturation here with this. And so this is the color which I ended up with, which is what I saved out. And so that is what I put in the diffuse. So if you go into Max, it's right here. And I put that straight into diffuse. And what I next did is I needed to have this visible in here. I needed to see what it was. So I came here, I turned on this, I turned on that. And then I tend not to use my camera viewport for this. I'll use another one. It doesn't really matter which. I just come in here and I just press Z to zoom in. And I press F3 to come out of, uh, to come out of wireframe mode into default shading. And then Alt W just so this is brought into the viewport, and then I spin around. And I can see then what I'm dealing with. Now, originally when this came in, I changed this. Originally the tiling was 1, 1, and this was all zeroed. And I looked at that, and I was like, well, that's just too big. I mean, okay, you can't see it here that well, but from experience, that, that's just too big. If you want to see it better, you can come in here, configure viewports, and... Here you've got textures, and this tells you the maximum pixels. So texture maps is set at 512 pixels, even though this is 4K. So I'm going to put it up to 4,000. But I will, and then click Apply. But I will warn you, don't do this. If you've got a big scene, and you don't really know what's going on, um, or you've got tons and tons of maps, don't do that because you crash your scene, because it's going to try and load in every texture map at the maximum resolution or as close to 4k as possible but for something simple like a sofa this is perfectly fine and I look at that and I go well it's just too big now there's two solutions either I push up the tiling which is what I did I put it up to three and then I was like yeah I, I like that I like the size of the grain now and what's happening or 
you leave it at one and you come in here, you go into your you know sub object mode. Now the reason this is like this is because I've got NERMS subdivision on, so turn that off if you like. But you can come in here and then you can just do mapping. You can just come in and put on your own UV mapping. So if you need to, come in, put on UV, you can put box on, and then you can come in here and you can set this to any size you want. This is at 2 meters, so you can bring this down. So if you need to, map it, but if you don't need to, in this case I didn't think I did. But if you don't need to, just come in here, open up your map, and instead of mapping, you can just adjust the tiling here. And so I made it 3x3 three three instead of 1x1. One one. Uh, but then what happened is I ended up with a problem where you can see what's happening here, and you can, let me just this. I just moved. There you, go. you can see the same appearing over here in this corner. So I don't really want to have the same appearing twice. I don't want to have that tiling going on, that obvious tiling. So in order to resolve that, and bear in mind you can also do this with a UV map. You just go into your sub-object, you know, if you've got a UV map on here. You can just go into the gizmo and then you can come up here and you can click here on select and rotate and you can just rotate the gizmo any which way you want but i'm going to delete that uv and what i did is i just rotated it right in here so 10 degrees on the u angle 10 degrees on the v angle 10 degrees on the w angle so everything was just rotated by 10 degrees and it meant i wasn't going to get any tiling going on so you know, that was my solution, and that worked out really well. Now, the next thing which I do when I create any material is I'm always looking here at the reflection amount and the glossiness amount. So, and I get that right. Before I put any maps in, I get that right. So, what I did is I just set it at that at 141. I just randomly brought it up. And you can see here, it's too glossy. You know, you get these perfect reflections. And so I brought this down to 0.75, and I ended up with something which I thought, okay, that's probably going to render out quite nice. That's pretty accurate. And then what I did is I took this map, and I pressed Shift, click and drag. And then I clicked on here, and from this I loaded in the original seamless map. And then this I decided I was going to use for reflection, and the reflective glossiness, and the bump. So I put that straight into my reflection map. Now there's various solutions here. You can see immediately here that it's brought a lot of color in with the reflection. Uh, but also I don't want the blacks not reflecting at all. I want there to be reflections there. So in order to resolve that, I drop this reflection amount down to 50. And a lot of the color went. There's still going to be some color coming through from this, but not as much as there was before. Now I put that straight into reflection glossiness. And that just, you know, you can see immediately all that glossiness, all of that reflection of the scene, that's all missing. That, that, that sharp highlights, that's all missing. So next thing I did was I just put in a simple color correction. And a way I often like to use color correction is I come along and I chuck it in. And in this case, what I wanted to do is just leave it on standard. You can come on advanced and you can push this up. And this is what I used to do. I used to come in here and I'd push it up to seven or I'd push it up to whatever I wanted. But I find these days, you can see the effect it's having here. I want to have more contrast. So in many cases, I leave that there and I yank up the contrast and I bring up the brightness. And I play with these two until I get to where I want to be. And maybe this contrast comes down, and maybe that's too much. And that looks pretty nice. So that's what I do there. And then the last thought is to put it into bump. So really, you want that contrast again for the bump, so we can use the same map. And then what I do as well for this is I like to take this blur, and I put that down to point 0.2. 
And I did the same with this. I just don't want it blurred so much. I want some nice, sharp detail coming in. And again, 30 on the bump is too much, probably closer to 10. And that's really what I did. If you look here, yeah, sure, that's the 10. That's the 50 on a reflection. So this is what I was using, and this is what I was rendering. And that's it. Basically, that's your leather. So in summary, what is it we're trying to do? What, how do we create leather? We create it by getting a diffuse that we like, putting it in there, and putting on the UVW onto the object to make it so that works. If we need to, we can either take it here and we can change the tiling here, or we can change the angle here, or we can put a UV map on here and just adjust the UV coordinates here and, and rotate the UV map itself. Then after that's done, you adjust the reflection and the reflective glossiness, and you just get that to look something like one of your references. And you can see these are they're quite different. And these are just general guidelines as to what to do. You know, because leather, there's such a variety of leather, you don't take a photo and go, that's exactly what I'm going to do. You take it and go, okay, something like that. Something maybe a bit like another photo, but you know leather ne how leather needs to look. Now, one of the important things to notice is that there's no fall-offs here in the leather if you look here. You know, it's not like other fabrics where you get a fall off. There's no fall off there on the arm. You know, all you're seeing here is the reflection and the reflection there. But you don't get any fall off on the fabric like you do with other fabrics. And that's really the important thing there. So you just put the diffuse in and then you adjust the reflection and the glossiness. Bring down that glossiness a bit. Get out something which you like. Bear in mind, if you want to have this more reflective, what I would do is turn that off and sorry turn, unclick lock and just push this up but for my purposes 1.6 works fine and then once that's done take a map put that into your reflection slot put it into your reflective glossiness slot and then adjust these amounts so you get a percentage of the map and a percentage of these colors up here and the reason i do that is you know, if you look here, you've got blacks. So those blacks are not going to be reflective at all. And this is not going to be reflective that as much as you'd like. So you can just, you know, instead of editing this in Photoshop and raising the, those darks and making them less dark, you can just come in here and do two things. Adjust the amount, the percentage that we're seeing this map and the percentage we're seeing the color up there and then also use a color correction to make it brighter. And that's really the simplicity of it. That is how you create leather in 3ds Max and V-Ray. And then you render it out and you make sure you have some passes. <laughs> and in this case, um, I made sure I had the reflection pass and without it, it comes out like that. And then I just put it in and I change it linear dodge add from that. You can you don't have to, you can use other ones, but you know, you can go through these and see which you like the most. But I quite liked linear dodge add. And then I set the opacity there at 50, because by default it was at 100 up there, which is just a bit too much here. So drop that down to 50. And then I masked it out using an object ID mask. But you can add these in your render elements, and then you can render them out, and that's how you make leather in 3ds Max and V-Ray. Hit that subscribe button. That helps me do more of these tutorials and show you guys some more tips and tricks on how to do things.